Hi everyone. Last time we took a look at how your sea perch stays afloat in the water. This week we're going to talk about what powers your sea perch. One word, electricity. Electricity is a general term we hear all the time. It can refer to electrical charges or currents or electromagnetism, or the power stored in a battery, which is called electrical potential. The power in your sea perch battery is the electrical energy that the perch motors convert into mechanical force. This is what powers your propellers to spin. And when they spin, the propeller exerts another force on the water. And remember, for every action, there is an opposite and equal reaction. And this reaction force from the water is what keeps your sea perch moving through the water. To take a look at this whole process, we're going to start off small. Very small. With atoms. Atoms are so tiny that you can't even see them, but they make up all the matter that surrounds us. Atoms are made of subatomic particles called electrons, protons, and neutrons. Electrons are negative, protons are positive, and neutrons are neutral, which means they don't have a charge. The protons and neutrons are located in the center of an atom, which is called the nucleus. Electrons are found outside the nucleus, and they move so fast that sometimes they're called an electron cloud. If an atom has the same number of protons and electrons, then the atom is neutral. However, if there are more protons than electrons, then it's said to have a positive charge. If an atom has more electrons than protons, it is said to have a negative charge. If an atom has a charge at all, whether positive or negative, it is called an ion. Ions are formed by gaining or losing electrons. When we talk about electricity, we're really talking about how charged particles, usually electrons, move from one atom to another. Let me show you. When I rub this comb into this wool sweater, it's actually rubbing electrons off of the sweater and onto the comb. I'm giving the comb a negative charge. These pieces of paper are made of atoms. When we hold the negatively charged comb close to the papers, it causes the positive part of the atoms in the paper to be attracted to the comb. This buildup of electric charge in the comb is called static electricity and is strong enough to lift the pieces of paper. You may have actually experienced static shock before, like when you rub your shoes and socks against a carpet and then touch a doorknob. The object, which is the doorknob, discharges and becomes neutral. Some materials hold on to their electrons very tightly so that the electrons don't move through them very well. These are called insulators. Plastic, cloth, and glass are good insulators because they resist the flow of electric charges. Other materials have loosely held electrons, which move through them very easily. These are called conductors. Most metals are good conductors. The wires for your sea perch will be made of copper or some other metal with a high conductivity. When talking about electrical properties of materials, it is very important to know that opposite charges attract. This is because charges want to be balanced or neutral. It is also important to know the direction the electrons move from negative to positive. So like charges will always repel and unlike charges will attract. To control the flow of the current, you need to provide a circuit to give the electrons a path to flow through. So you're going to need to create an electrical circuit for the motor of your sea perch to work since the electricity from the battery has to flow through the terminals of the motor. But you don't want electricity to flow all the time and you want to control the motors on your sea perch. You have to have a way to open the circuit and stop the flow of electrons. So you're going to need to create a switch for your sea perch to turn it on and off, stopping the flow of electricity. We created our own circuit here to show you how it works. We use some wire, a battery, a light bulb, and a switch. The wires connect the battery to the switch, the switch to the light bulb, and the light bulb to the battery. When I turn the switch on, the light goes on. The electricity is flowing around through the circuit. It's like electrons are running in circles. If we didn't have an on-off switch, we wouldn't be able to stop them from running. So when everything's connected, it would just run and run and run until the battery died. If you didn't have an on-off switch for your sea perch, you would drain the battery before the competition even started. Batteries are just one source of electricity. There's other things like fuel cells, generators, and electrical grids, just to name a few. But for your sea perch, you've just got to worry about your battery. The current that batteries provide is called DC, or direct current. DC is different from AC, or alternating current. That's what comes out of the outlet in the wall. But since the sea perch uses a direct current, it might help if we explained how we use it to make the motor work. Let's start with that electromagnetic force. This force is what holds particles, like protons and electrons, together to make atoms. And when the atoms bond, they create compounds or molecules. In other words, they hold our world together. And it also explains how a magnetic field works. There's a strong relationship between electricity and magnetism. An electrical current can be created using a magnetic field. And a magnetic field can be created using an electrical current. Check out this electromagnet we made. We used a battery and some wire. By coiling the wire, we get the magnetic field to focus in the middle of the loop. If we increase the number of coils, we will increase the strength of the magnetic field. The strength of the magnetic field can be further increased by coiling it around an iron core or a bar, such as a nail. Magnets are fun to work with. If I have two magnets like these, I can't put the positive sides together because the positive charges repel one another. The same thing will happen if she tries to push the two negative ends together. 
But if I take a positive pole and a negative pole, the two are attracted to each other and come together. The negative electrons want to go towards the positive charge. Now, in a DC motor, the electricity from the battery creates a magnetic field. So basically, DC motors turn electrical energy into magnetic force, and that magnetic force is used to spin the motor. We made our very own DC motor with a wire, a magnet, and a battery. When the wire touches the battery and the magnet, we complete the circuit of the motor, and the wire spins. And your seat perch will work the same way. The battery will cause the motor to turn just like our motor did. Whew, I think that's enough for today. Me too.